Right, we are getting very close to finishing off this full video series on this vandalation project. We have done uh, lots of mechanical work, lots of rust repair. We have shown you how to make uh, panels by body form. We've also shown you how to make panels by cutting the old ones out and fitting them in and doing all sorts. Um, so this is kind of going to be the last one on this. Then we're going to be showing you how to properly um, actually protect your panels with wax on them all in the inside so if you want to know how we even got to this point and the doe guy who smashed the living shit out the van uh go and see them videos here's a little clip of one <laughs> it's rusty Welcome to another budget and Lego video. Yes, we are now going to be putting this final panel over the top here. And to be fair, these are Magnum panels. Um, but to be fair, I have to say, they're quite a nice fit. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do it how I wanted to do it on the other side. I'm going to do another lap joint. But obviously, here, from about here onwards, and from here down can you see that on camera you can i ha i can't do a lap joint i have to do a butt joint here and a butt joint here but from here on i can do a lap joint i might do a butt joint from there down i should have maybe well i, I still can i can maybe come down more of an angle so i can do a anyway look it doesn't really matter um <clears throat> and then what i can do is and this is what i don't know what i'm going to do yet I could have this welded with a nice lap joint where I use very, very, very small amount of fillers. Obviously that's going to take a lot longer. Or I can just weld it once and put a bit of fillers on, which again is not really a problem. I'll decide that when I come to it. I showed it on the other side how I could, uh, because we had a lot of fillers, I didn't really get the, the lap joint all the way up to the top because there was no point. I was filling it. Anyway, if I put a nice... Um, tight lap joint on here i could get away with welding it once possibly twice grinding all the weld down so it's really really flat so i'm using a very very small thing of fillers the downside to that is it takes more time and you've got more of a chance of warping this panel you can see just how flexible it is and if you put too much heat into this you're going to tin can it which that to be honest is kind of already cannon so that metal is stretched um, <clears throat> but again our lap joints gonna gonna solve all that but I can even feel now there's gonna be that is dinted in so I might do a little bit of dolly work with that um, I'm not doing hammer on dolly you know that's another hammer i'm doing hammer off dolly it's kind of better but yeah that's a bit better look i'm not really worried about it to be honest because it's a 2007 tranny Right, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to prepare the area. So I'm going to grind all this down, all this old um, stone chip, get a nice metal on there. Then we're going to have to find out what we do and don't need on our panel. And that's the tricky bit. Doing it this way, doing a lap joint is very tricky because I have to creep up on this panel very slowly. If I was doing a cut and shut, as I call it, where I, um, I weld the panel to and I, I, I cut through both panels at once, I don't have to worry about anything. I know I could cut this panel roughly above where it is, do my cut and shut, and I'll be fine. 
doesn't take as long as the preparation, but takes longer welding and a hell of a lot longer grinding. The problem is with doing a butt joint, a, a full on butt joint in my opinion, is what people do is, especially on the outside, is they grind the weld flat then, so it looks nice. But the problem is, you do a butt joint, the weld has penetrated, don't get me wrong, but you're still grinding 98% of the weld away. When you leave a one mil gap, which is what I like to do if I'm doing a butt joint, this is a bit we took out of here in the previous video, you leave a one mil gap, your weld fills up that one mil gap. So when you grind the face of it down, you've still got all that weld in between the two panels and also penetrating on the back. It's a hell of a lot stronger and it's just a hell of a lot better. But with this panel, it will be, you know, to try and stop it from warping would be, well, you just have to take your time. I also see people, and do not do this under any circumstances, do not use an air gun to cool the panel down. What's going to happen is, when you weld anything together, especially thin metal, it's going to want to pull in because the heat, as, it, as, it, as just the heat comes onto it and it starts cooling down, it will shrink and it will cause this V in the panel. You put cold air to it, you're going to cause that shrink to be even more and even more pronounced, which is then going to warp this panel even more. It's going to cause you so much more problems. To spot weld this panel properly and letting it cool down could take two hours. And I know that sounds crazy. You're not two hours work, but you're spotting it every inch, letting it cool down so you can put your hand so it comes back to room temperature. Every time, your, your physical spot welds might only take two minutes to do, but you might have to be waiting 15, 20 minutes between each of them spot welds to let the panel cool down if you don't want warpage. With a lap joint, I can get away with doing a lot more spot welds a lot quicker because the lap joint is a lot stronger in the sense of it's not going to allow the panel to move and warp on me. So it's easier to do and it's stronger. The, the lap joint we're going to do, because what most people do, I say most people, people don't like lap joints and I don't understand why because most things on cars is a lap joint. This essentially is a lap joint. Water can sit on here and that's what rusts out all this. When people, oh, it's gonna rust, it's gonna crack, blah, blah, blah. Panels rust because water sits in them because they're all basically a lap joint. So it's like everything. If you do a lap joint like that, so the panels on the inside, imagine the panels on the inside, the water essentially can come down here and rest on there. And all the bits of crap that build up can rest on there and it'll rust out that joint. Yes, I agree. Again, it's gonna take a while, but I agree. The lap joint I'm gonna do is essentially have the joint at the bottom. So the water just runs off, right? I'm going to joggle this panel, not joggle this panel, that's the key. Joggle the panel you've got on your vehicle, that's why you do a nice kind of arc like this and it's easy to jog the panel. On the other side, I did step joints, which I still prove you can joggle a panel like that, but this is just easier. So I'm going to joggle this panel and I'm going to do my step joint, which is just going to, well, you'll see, it's going to make things a lot easier. Hell of a lot less grinding. I've proven that on the other side. For me to do a proper joint on this and then grind it all, is going to take a long time, put an awful lot of heat on this. When I do my step joint, um, I'm literally going to be grinding this panel, I'd say 40 seconds, a, a minute, a minute and a half at the most, say two minutes, right? As opposed to 20, 30 minutes grinding it any other way. So the time saving is, is hellish. But what I'm going to do, which is key, which is really key for this, is I'm going to wax all the inside of these panels. You can see I've sealed all this. So all my welds have been sealed. Um, again, you're not going to see this, but at least it stops any crap coming through or in or out or anything. If there's slight little pinholes or anything like that. But with these holes that are already in the panel and the holes that are here and every hole that is around, I'm going to squirt wax oil in and completely cover the inside of this. Wax oil, I'm not saying there's not other stuff out there. I'm just used to using wax oil and I know it works. Wax oil never ever dries, it kind of always stays sticky, so it doesn't allow anything to really stick onto it. 
it's absolute brilliant i'm not saying yes look stuff's all gonna rust but i guarantee you 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 wax all your your inside your vehicle every couple of years you're not going to have an issue and if you do it's going to be very very minor issue i'm not saying you won't have any rust ever but it's going to be a hell of a lot less right i'm just going to grind all this off off camera because there's no point in just watching me grind it get a nice bead of um shiny metal all the way across here first right and like i said i know i'm going to get people saying this is not a proper repair you shouldn't use these type of joints and all this which is just absolutely crazy and just bullshit basically i'm going to push this out i want to try and stop this tin can in a little bit more ah look at that see it's not it's not tin cannon anymore a little bit there still Um, but if you want to be really technical about it, it's like a door skin. When you replace the bottom of the door skin, if you want to be technical about it, you replace the whole door skin. So that means replacing the whole side of the van. Look, it's, it comes down to cost at the end of the day. And in this particular case, for a van um, and for the quickness and ease enough, is that it, it makes sense doing the way I'm doing it. I've just realised there's a bit of seal it there I need to get rid of right this is a joggler they're relatively inexpensive you've got a punch one side to put holes in which is really good for spot welding and you've got a joggler at this side so because I've got a nice kind of um, arch I can move down there now I'm only going to get I'm only going to get into there so I'm not going to be able to go past there so from here to there so there and there there and there is going to be a butt joint but again I'm still going to use that one mil gap so let's get this joggled oh I got the wrong end on my joggler don't hate it when that happens got the right end on it now and you can see the step that you get in it. So, right to the edge, right the way up. What this will also do, this will give this panel some strength. So you'll see now, you see in the movement in this panel, once I do this step, this panel will become a lot stronger. Hopefully you can start seeing that line coming into here. And what this is actually doing is causing us a step. But when we put our new panel on, our new panel is going to be flush with the old panel. So there's not going to be a big huge step like you might think there would be. If I was just to put this over the top and weld it, there'd be a huge step and you have to put a lot of fillers in, which is not great. Anyway, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to run down, up and down this three or four times to get a real nice juggle on this. Then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so we've got our nice juggling, but now we've got a serious problem. This has just completely gone on me already. Really to the point where when I put this panel on, it look, I can push it tight, but it's actually binding up about here and maybe there. So what I'm gonna do just quickly, because we can weld, I'm just gonna cut this. I think the bind is about here. <laughs> Yeah, instantly. Yeah, that's so much better. And now, yeah, look at the difference. We will weld that up. I can actually weld that up in place now. I opened up the gap a little bit. But I'm not gonna worry about that yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this panel down to size. Um, I've already cut a bit of it off. 
you'll look on my other video on how I actually creep up on it and how I actually get the panel lines right with marking and everything. So check out the other video for that. I'm going to get it right and then I'll turn the camera back on. Right, this is kind of going away from me already and I haven't even welded it. And I was just trying a bit of heat treatment on it and then I thought, well, I might as well film it. Um, this is not the correct way of doing it. You need a wet towel and you need a proper Austin acetylene torch to do this, but I should be able to get away with it because I've kind of sorted that out. So, just use my mat gas. And I'll do some circles. That's even just gone in already. I don't know if you heard that. That just popped in. But it's not going to stay in because if I pop it out, see? But it's certainly a lot stronger now, so. I'm a lot happier with that. Maybe what you can do with a little bit of heat. It's a lot better now, it's not wearing out. I'm gonna have some issues with this, I think, when I weld it, because this is kind of gone. Once I weld up that, that'll strengthen up this a little bit. But I'm gonna to have to play with this as I'm welding it, I think, because I don't know how this, this is just completely gone. This is just completely gone. And I haven't even put any weld or anything to it. I didn't do anything. Anyway, we'll get it when we get the panel up. Just like the other side, I'm kind of changing my mind as I go now. I don't know if it's gonna be best for me to completely do this different. I've marked this line, so I wanna show you this because I didn't show you this on the far side. So I got this close, but I, I, I was cutting, but I knew I was cutting, so I've got loads of room spare. So I've got a couple of options now. One, I can, I can do the cut and shut on this. Um, the problem is, I can't really, I'll have to cut a lot of that off because I can't get it out. So that's one thing, but that will get rid of this kind of bowed metal here, but it'll also give me a hell of a lot more work as regards grinding the weld down. Or what I can do is, this is another method I want to show you. So we know now that this is our original panel. So you want to get this panel down to this mark. We've got our scribes here, which are adjustable scribes. I can take marks, so, so from the bottom up here to this, like that. And then I can come down to our panel and I can mark that on our panel, like that. Then I can come to another point of reference, wherever that happens to be. So we'll say just kind of there on the point of that angle. So that from there, uh, actually I haven't got that, so we'll have to go from here to there, for example. So that's on our mark, which is there, so we can then mark it there. And essentially go all the way around and get a, a mark, depending on where you want. And what you can even do is put this on here, like that. Mark a couple of things like this. So you know to put your mark there and there, you know, mark it here and go all the way around and get it really close. I'm now gonna decide what I'm gonna do here. This will get it absolute bob on for you. Okay, I've made up my mind and I've changed it. <laughs> I've now cut the panel to where I'm happy with it. So what I've done, I then marked it where the panel lies. I then came with these and got the lip of the juggler and I then scribed a line underneath my line on the car. So if I now cut to this line here and juggle that line this will perfectly match up with this. It will also get rid of this twisted metal here because I know what's happened. There's been welding and stuff done here before. There's a lot of material here with no structure. This is strong here, close to there. And of course, with me putting that juggling, I've made it a little bit worse. 
and I've kind of stretched and warped the panel. But I've got enough panel here to cut that out, get most of that out of the way. It's a lot stronger here than it is down here and we're going to be fine. So I'm going to now cut this mark that I've made. Hopefully, fingers crossed then, it should line up more or less bob on with this, wherever that, there is it here and there, like that. So it should line up with that pretty well, I'm hoping. Which in turn then, will get my joggle back. Okay, I should have thought about it really. The more panel you've got, the, the weaker it is. Look at that, that's absolutely strong. And it's not because this panel was weak. It's because it was just too long, especially when you put the joggle in it. But you can really see the jogger now. But this has done a couple of things. One, it's removed a lot more rust, see? Like I said, this panel's gonna be rusty all the way up there. It just is, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, so I've removed a lot more of the rust, which is good. And now the panel's a hell of a lot stronger. Just look how much better that panel fits. See? There's no gap or anything like there was before. It was pushing out like this before. So what I've got to do now is, I've got to cut out the edge because we're going to do a butt joint at the edges and a butt joint down here. And I'm going to joggle again. I'm going to joggle my, um, I'm going to say from here to wherever the joggle fits, to be honest. It's going to be about there. That's what I'm going to do. But what I've got to now do is rub all this, um, Schultz off now again. Right, okay, I should have really remembered because I can remember the first time I ever did this with the juggle this way. Because um, I was always, people was always saying, oh, you don't do this, don't do, don't do step joints, don't do this. And I was like, well, why? I, I couldn't get round my head. I could kind of get round my head why they don't like it. But then I was thinking, well, why don't we do it on the panel? So the first time I did it, just like everything, you try and cut away as least of the original panel as possible. And I was doing it, I think I was doing it on a back door or something. So it was a big panel. Because this does, again, this, this won't always work on, you know, all the big panels. This is a big panel, but it's only a small area. And it went on me and I was like, oh, okay, that's why they don't do it. Thinking, you know, because it completely went on me. I kind of got this back with the heat, but you can see, look, I did kind of get the panel back. It wasn't too bad, but it was still, you know, it was just, just going to cause me problems welding. But now I've actually cut this down so it's a lot stronger near the joint. Look at that. Absolutely solid. And we've got a nice juggle. And the good thing about a juggle, for those who don't know, is as we put our panel up, let me just clean this off. It's not the best thing to use because this is warped. Or well, not warped, but bent. But anyway, it is completely smooth. See? If we were to do that, there's a gap there. So now, that is completely smooth all the way across the panel. And our, on our join, as you can see, look, we're not, we're not doing it this way where the water can catch and stuff can catch on it. It's under here, so it's at the bottom. So once we wax oil and seal it, it's gonna be fine. Yes, the rust can get in here and stuff, you know, I understand why people don't like it, but again, you have to pick your battles. And for this, I think this is going to be perfect. I still haven't notched out my end yet, but what we should have now, we should very, yeah, look at that. More or less, absolute perfect. Um, once I clean that burr away, let's clean the burr away. All right, so I clean the burr away, and now you can see might have to adjust it slightly. Also got to remember this is this is not stepped out. If I go in the middle, look at that. Nice and flat. So I'm gonna step out these at the end so I can get a nice butt weld joint up there and at the bottom. And then we're gonna be ready to fit this panel. So I've cut away these bits at the top and the side or the top and the bottom, whatever you want to say. And now our panel absolutely, absolutely fits bloody lovely. Nice one mil gap there. 
butt joint down the bottom, butt joint at the top. Obviously we will get our spot welds, but what I want to do now is I want to mark where I'm putting my... So I'm going to use this again to mark where my big holes are, so we don't put any spot welds there, because there'll be drilling holes there for absolutely no reason whatsoever. it might help so we need to go from here to here so I don't need anything there and I don't need anything there and same on here and here so I now know I don't need anything essentially make sure I'm right before I do it there and there yep now with this juggler, even though I got the wrong one, you can get one with a bigger hole, but at least I can mark the holes of juggler and just drill it out bigger with a drill. But the thing with the jugglers, I'll just show you. A good modification to do when you get yours, the original hole that you put here, when you, you, know, you can only normally put it in that far, like that, right? As you can see, look, that hole is very, very close to the edge. But what I've done is, I'll show you next to it. Now, look at my hole. <laughs> you see how much further away from the edge it is? So what I've done is I got a blade. I got a blade and I cut a slit in it to allow me to get the juggler a lot further in. So what I'm going to do now is, We will mark. That's how I'm trying to do it on camera. Can you see what I'm doing? One. And I think we'll do two for this. Right, so I do two spot welds there. I'm going to open them up with the uh, with a bigger drill bit. But two spot welds there would be fine. Maybe put one, two, three, four spot welds there, and two spot welds there. So we've got a two spot welds there. Also, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark where I put my spot welds so I can grind off the paint that I've put on so I get a really nice a nice job but anyway you can see what I'm doing so there's no point filming any more of that just putting holes in metal right what I did is when I I drilled these out to 8.8s would have preferred them a bit bigger but didn't have the room on the panel but what I did is I purposely drilled them like this which is not which is what you're not supposed to do you want them nice and flat, get a piece of wood behind it and you'll get a better, you'll get a better cut in the drill bit. But the reason why I did it that way is I wanted to show you. Look what happens when you drill something. You see all these burr edges come up and I see a lot of people, they don't clean them off. This panel won't fit dead flat against there now. So when you do do anything like that, just very quickly go over with the grinder. Knock off the birds on both sides. And also, because you haven't put it flat, you can see, look, look at the, look how much it's misshapen that edge. So just get your hammer then, flat side of it. Hope you can see that now. Just a far, far better fit. But if you do with the piece of wood, you won't have to do that. But I'm just saying. So I've also cleaned up where all my spot welds go. I've done another video, or not a separate video, but on the other side, showing you perfect spot welds. And again, a lot of people, especially with welding, especially with MIG welding, when you're not doing it every single day, and depending on what car you're doing it on, um, you know, the metal changes, different thicknesses and all that sort of stuff. And it can be very, very difficult to set up your welder. 
So it's always good to practice on an old piece, but I have a way around it where you never ever have to set your weld up again. And it's easy, are you ready? Get yourself a Fronius Transteel 2200. This thing is absolutely awesome. Let me just turn it on. So, as regards to set up your welder, this thing, you ready? I was doing one mil steel with it, doing the other side of the van, but let's say you want to do 1.5 mil. Oh, go the right way. There you go, 1.5 mil. Let's say you want to do 2.1, which is unusual size, but anyway, or two mil, or 2.5, or anything in between, three mil, three and a half mil. So quick and easy, that's all I got to do is one touch of the button, or the little wheel, and boom, back to one mil. This is all set up, wire speed, amps, you name it, it's done it, perfect. And then we can weld and get perfect welds all the time. How awesome is that? Also, if you want to know how to build this awesome welding cart, which takes two big, huge bottles, because this machine will take two bottles at the same time um, for different things, go and check it out. It's full of crap at the minute because this is all the bits I cut off. But this thing is awesome. So is the welder. Okay, so I am very, very close to welding this in. What I've got to do, grind off these. I've got to put some sealer along this edge here. And then we can actually get to welding. Just want to make sure I've got everything. What I want to do is I want this to be slightly down a bit more. So I'm just going to slightly take off a really thin amount, maybe one mil, so the thickness, thickness of a cutting disc I'm going to take off here. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want that slight little step. I've, I've gone it a bit too good in the sense of it's really butt up against that. I want it slightly off so my weld goes into the middle of that channel. When I grind it off flat, I am using hardly any, hardly any. Um, well, actually, is that in the right place? If I bring it down. Oh, yeah. Is it? Oh, that's up there. I, only, I don't even have to go one mil. I just got to slightly shave a little bit off. So a little bit off here. I'm going to mark it there. A little bit off there. All right, just let me just finesse this slightly just so I'm happy with the little gap that I've got around there and then we can actually weld it. Okay, I've slightly finessed everything. So I'm just going to line it all up to make sure first that it is okay before we do anything. That's too high. So is that there? Keep wide one mil gap all the way across everywhere. Just to see, do I need to do anything with it? It's about there, maybe. Now, you see it's still a bit tight up here, but I just push that down a bit and get my one mil gap. A bit tight there, but I think I get away with it. A bit tight here, but again, I think I get away with it. Um, that's basically it. So, uh, that is basically on. I think I'm just going to uh, slightly maybe Get this down a bit more, just there. And maybe give that a bit of a, 
bit of a sand in there. So we just do that off camera, just them few little spots. I'm not happy with that, that's a bit low. So if that's low, it's gonna push that up. So that needs to be there. Still a tad low. It's maybe just more the panel than anything else. The actual fitment of the panel, because these are obviously they're not genuine panels. So just don't like that gap there, it's just falling down. But we're level with the bottom. So I think this is more of a panel fitment issue. Than anything else. See, if it gets pushed at an angle there, right at the edge, it's kind of okay. I'll just put that right there. We go, and then I can bring that. That's it. All right. So I can bring that to it now. I'm a lot happier with that now. Nice and flat. Gap's a little bit too big there, but I'll, I'll be able to weld it. A little bit too small there. There we go. Now. Yeah, so I just need to, well, actually no, I don't need to cut any more off. I'm happy enough with that. Um, I do need to cut a tiny bit of air because it's, it's just too much of it's too flat there or it's too, it's too much of a butt joint there so i'm going to cut the thickness of the disc off the panel that will give me my one mil gap yeah then i can seal it and start welding it okay i put my sealer on so we are kind of working to a time limit as such once i get this on and once i get enough clamps on here it will it will be okay but we still need to be working to uh, like an almost, well, just need to be working. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Just ignore me. a lot better when it comes to welding which is what I will do because I've been moving the bottom in because the spot welds are the last thing you do because it's easier to cut this off than it is spot welds in case something goes wrong or something happens because look you never know I mean you don't want to be taking it off but you just never know in these cases but I just that needs to be kind of like there or maybe not so much that far, but it certainly needs to be out. So we're going to do a little bit of splodging with that. A little bit of splodging. Should have done this before I put the sealer on, but I managed to get it perfect. There we go. There we go. I'm happy with that now. So I'll put my first tack there to keep that in place. Now, let me get my welder. Okay, I'm not going to show all the welding because it's going to take a long time to weld this and it's just spots. But I'm going to put spots maybe every inch, every two inches, all the way across. But I need to get it into all the right places first so I'm happy with it before I actually put my first tack on it. So I want to line this up first. 
get that where I want it. Oh, I didn't bring my mat back. But this is in the right place. I hope for the best. Oh, what happened there? Did that stay? Did my, uh, ah yeah, tip is loose. I taught it, taught it was. Anyway, I got my spot there. I'm happy with that. Another spot at the bottom here. Now. Really happy with that now. So I can work my way up. It depends on your panel. Sometimes it's good to start in the middle and go out. With a, not with a really, really long panel, because that can go on you and all sorts. Uh, but I can just tell with this panel, I'm going to go from one end to the other. It just depends on your panel and how the metal feels. Um, another good thing that I personally like to do, as you can see, this panel is away from the van. See, look, I've got a gap there all the way. I, that's how I set my panels up. This is just me personally. Even if I was doing a book joint, I'd set both panels up so that they're, they're kind of pushing away, pushing out. Because when you weld it, it's going to want to shrink in. So the fact that it's pushing out, when you weld it, rather than it shrinking in all the way, it's only going to shrink in a little bit of the way. It's just, it's just, it just helps. It's longer to set your panels up like that because you kind of have to, you know, make sure everything's kind of bent out. But it's better when you're coming to set up. But again, look, there's loads of different ways of doing it. It's whatever, it's whatever suits you. Like I was explaining in another video, when you're doing work for even a car or a van underneath, because it's failed the test, what most people do is to just weld a plate. They cut out the wrist, but they just weld a plate on top because you're not gonna get paid to do it any other way. If you say to the customer, well, look, I can do it properly and it's going to cost you four times as much, but they're not going to be able to see it anyway. So welding a plate on top underneath somewhere isn't, it really isn't a big deal. But the old uh, internet tough guys and the keyboard warriors who think they know what they're talking about say you have to do that for every single job. And it's just fucking idiots like that that just haven't got a clue. Because if I would say to you, right, I can do a job on your car, it's going to cost you a thousand quid and it's going to be done right. Or I can do the same job that's going to be just as strong, just as any, but it's going to cost you 300 or 200. Which one are you going to choose? Exactly. Oh, I'm going to have to cut that off. I didn't push it down. That's going to cause me a lip. We don't want a lip. That's the whole idea of doing this. It's not called a bloody lip. She's really put the van down a little bit off the lift. It's a bit too high and that's the problem. I'm just going to get my first line of welds on it then I'll bring the van down a bit. Right, look at that. Here, still sticks because we haven't pushed it down, but here, 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 and here. Nice and flat, the way we like it. Let's put it this way, the flat earthers would be impressed because we all know that the earth is flat. I mean, there's just so much evidence to prove it, isn't there? See, already this is just getting so strong. Bloody earth. I thought I had a good earth, but that wasn't. Did you hear that earth uh, crackle? Enough. 
This is the hardest one to do, the first one, because with the first line of welds, you're setting the piece. So you're getting it in exactly the place you want before you actually weld. place before I Okay, Koki we are now our first line of weld is on and just feel that now that whole panel it's not warp it's not tin canning I could have got away with doing what I did before, but I would, I would just be playing with a lot of mess and I'd end up putting a lot more fillers on. So cutting more of the metal off has made my life a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna let that cool down. All I'm gonna do now is, there's no point in me filming, I'm just gonna put more spots next to there. When I get halfway through, I'll turn the camera on and I'll show you a bit of the progress, but that's all I'm gonna do. But we're getting there people we are getting there right you can see i've got my light source shining over here because it just it really helps once you get to a stage where you've got some you know beads running along well they're not beads but they're just loaded spots together the gaps in the middle just put a spot in each of them in the middle of each big lot of weld because what tends to happen is this panel is going to want to lift up because of the heat so you want to keep them down because otherwise if you just keep spotting there especially on a big panel you'll find once you start meeting up with the um with the other spot welds you're going to kind of get like a lip forming and it also then could start making the panel kind of warp down in the middle so just keep an eye on it go slow let the panel cool down do not cool it down by air and keep going everybody has their own way of doing spot welds and all sorts and welding and anything so you know do do whatever you feel comfortable or whatever equipment you have to do the job but personally when i'm doing spot welds i like to have um you know a a, a nice flat uh, vice grips that can hold close to where you're doing plus have the spot weld vice grips because it just keeps everything together I, I just that's just the way i like to do it like I said, everyone's different. I like to start from the middle and do circles and work my way out. I've done other, on the other side, I've showed spot welds that came out perfect. So let's see if we can get another one. Nope, this is burned through. Oh, poor. This was the dodgy one. Not bad considering it was the dodgy one behind that. Let's try and get to a better one. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful people. When it comes to grinding, well, before I say that, right. Another good thing about that welder is you can just do nice little welds. You, sometimes when you've got a welder and it's not set up right and all that sort of, the welds, the spot welds kind of tend to be big. This, nice and small spot welds, but you know, thick, and it falls inside that little gap perfectly. But what you want to be careful when you're grinding is, grinding can still cause the panel to warp. This panel at the minute is not warped. It's absolutely perfect, right? Pushing really, really hard on one spot and keeping the grinder there, you're gonna just heat that area up and you cause it to warp. You want to gradually go over the grinder. So go over the area. I know I could, I could grind this in under two minutes, right? I really could, but I will be putting a lot of heat into the panel. So I'm gonna go over it first quickly just to knock off 
all the um, the head of it basically. <laughs> saw how quick that was I've put hardly any heat into it and I am literally I bet I'm 60% of the way look at that that is more or less just the top of this weld here I could put another line of weld on there to put hardly any fillers on I'm not going to I'm just gonna put a bit of fillers on it but I say I am maybe 50% of the way done 40% of the way done, maybe. Um, if I was to, if I was to do, done a butt weld, I'd be grinding, grinding, and grinding a lot, lot more. you can see I am really really close as soon as I get this panel and the weld flush I know I'm okay another thing I see a lot of people do is like especially with the butt weld they just keep grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding until it's completely flat like if you see here they'll just keep grinding but what you're actually doing is you're grinding away the metal on here and here not so much the weld so you're making the panel thinner um, I've also got to be careful I don't lose that line there so see tiny tiny bit there i could keep grinding that until it's not even there but i'm just grinding away this material that is absolutely perfect there is nothing wrong with it just got to do that edge stop now because I don't want to put too much heat on but I don't know if you can see that let me move the camera so when you look at that and you look at look see absolutely flat to the panel so the only bit of fillers is this top line here but if I came back with the welder and welded that line in there there would be hardly any fillers and i mean hardly any fillers but the thing is it's that's going to take you know another couple of hours and there is just no point doing it with this particular van there it is absolutely pointless so i'm just going to knock off the head there or just knock off a little bit more then i'm going to you know fill it prime it and do all that and i've done a separate video on that so there's no point in me filming all that as well um, but you can see how the lap joint has its advantages. That panel is absolutely solid. If I was doing a butt joint there, that could have tin can just like it did down here and it could have gone wrong very, very quickly. So I know just a little bit of fillers on there and it's going to be absolutely bob on. So this is what I'm saying about picking your battles, right? That now is really, really good. I mean, that panel, doesn't cat goes across 
absolutely flat. No warpage in that panel. I could, with this line, this black line you can see, I could come back in with the welder and weld that. That is part of the joggle that I created. Um, if I had the panel slid up a little bit more, my weld would have covered that in one. But to try and cover it in one weld is quite difficult. So I could come back in there, do that, grind it all off. Very, very little fillers, you'd hardly see it, but that's gonna take a long time. If, and no matter what, no matter how much fillers you put on this, you'll always see a MIG welded joint in the right sunlight, you just will. So, because the metal expands and extracts in different uh, temperatures and different, because this is a lot thicker, that this weld mark is gonna be a lot stronger than any other panel around because there's more metal there. And we've actually tempered it now because we've heated it up. So, if you really wanna do this, properly but you'll never get paid for it in this in this instance is you need to tig that because what you do is you'll tig when, when you're spot welding you're just you're just putting little spots when you're tigging you'll mostly tig five or six inches this at a time putting a lot a lot of heat in but tig is very pliable so what you'd have to do then is you'd have to have all the back cut out and then you hammer form that tig weld and you can actually smash that tig weld all the way down and then you can body shape it with, with, um, or your body, you know, with uh, hammers and dollies and everything. And uh, you will not need any fillers. But you are talking, the difference between doing this job and the job that I've just said is literally maybe three or four days longer. It, I mean, it is just, it is days, it's not hours, it's not minutes, it's days and days longer. So you would do that on a really, really expensive restoration, something that you want to get absolutely perfect, something that you're getting paid for. But obviously, with this 2007 tranny, you're not going to get paid for it. So, um, yeah, do you know, and it's, there's no point just putting everything to landfill and scrapping it and doing this when you can keep it on the road. So I'm actually, for what that is, I'm really happy with that. I can now put some... Um, some fillers and stuff on that. Now, what I will be doing is, I'll be putting a very, very thin smear. I'm only filling half an inch of this, this is all. Um, I'll be putting a very, very thin smear of, um, what's the word I'm looking for, the fillers? Oh, fiberglass fillers. And then finishing it off with ordinary fillers. Um, and then painting it like I did the other side. But this time, I'm going to let the paint dry and I'm not going to get a reaction. But that, absolutely solid, absolutely solid. And then the final video on this is going to be uh, wax on it, how to treat. And again, this weld and all the videos that I've done on this van is not just specific for this van, it will do any vehicle. And the wax oil again will treat any vehicle. So, you know, you can get tips and tricks. And I'll be doing a lot more welding videos and showing a lot more different styles and different things. And hopefully, um, if I get the right car in, most probably my Cosy van, I will be showing you how to actually TIG weld again. But it, it, you have to get the right vehicle in and you have to build. The thing with TIG weld is you have to be able to get to the other side of the, of the weld. So all the, all the inside panels have to be completely gone. So you have to do the outs. What I've done on this, I've done the inside panels first and put the outside panel. You have to do the opposite if you're doing that. Or if you've got like, say a wing or something, you know, or a door car or a door skin or anything like that, you can, you can do that, what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, but also what I want to show, and maybe I should have done it on this. I just, just thought of it now. I want to show um, brazing. MIG brazing. Um, it's technically not welding because you're under a certain temperature, but it's still very, very strong. And it's MIG brazing with, with a MIG basically. And my Feronius welder, welder will do that. And the thing with that is, especially with a lap joint, you can actually, you can actually get the brass to melt into the, the lap joint. And it's really strong, really easy to grind down. So it's, it's, it's not um, as hard as this weld. And it doesn't put as much heat into the panel. So it stops a lot of warpage. You still have to be careful. And some of the newer cars, they say you have to MIG braze with the newer stuff. 
some of the newer stuff if you're doing insurance jobs and you want to do the job properly and you, you know so you have to do that with this we can get away with just good old-fashioned mig welding which everybody basically has a mig welder because they're so so cheap now but once you start getting into uh, mig brazing it's another ball game because your welder needs to be able to do it that's another thing and normally the really really cheap welders won't you need different gas you need full argon gas not a mix and you need a slightly different um core inside your mig gun now you can get away with using the ordinary stuff but also what's very expensive is the is the wire the wire is three or four five times more expensive than normal mig wire so yeah spare that in mind okay it is done i haven't grinded down the weld underneath or anything because it really doesn't matter i'm spraying loads of stone chip there i've only sanded it down with uh, 120 because again i'm putting shorts over the top or stone chip so you can even see the thinners is that thin you can see that the um you can see the fiberglass fillers behind it that's all i'm going to do because once i put especially with the thick shorts it's going to cover all that it's going to be absolutely perfect pick your battles do the repair for the for the vehicle and go from there but at least now this vehicle is going to be on the road for a few more years so there we go as always hope it helps please like share comment and subscribe don't forget links up here links down below but most important don't forget get your hands dirty see you for the next one sorted most people won't show you putting paint onto a car and especially after they've done a load of body work because it's the paint that shows all the imperfections it can look absolutely perfect but as soon as you put paint on it the imperfections come up I sprayed a vehicle on my channel, a black car with a huge dint in it. Go and check that out because black is the worst. It has to be perfect. Etch primer first on all the bare metal. Yes, I just hit the tire. Now, even with that, you can clearly see perfect people. She's perfect. no waves no nothing and believe me the wet paint would show it all she's perfect